Hola, ¿qué tal? ¿Qué tal están? Buen día, bienvenidos. Buenos días a todas y a todos. Son las nueve de la mañana en, en Lisboa. Buenos días eh, a ustedes y a la a través de nuestro canal de YouTube. Hemos sido puntuales para, para todos. Eh, estamos en Lisboa en el marco de la presidencia de Portugal y de la Unión Europea para celebrar este segundo encuentro de instituciones de justicia de la Unión Europea y de América Latina. Perdón, me voy a quitar la mascarilla para hablar. Es una cita importante para todos los que trabajamos en el sector de la justicia para los que entendemos que la coordinación y la cooperación entre las dos regiones es fundamental para avanzar y para afrontar nuevos desafíos. Nos acompaña en este panel, primer panel de inauguración, la ministra de Justicia de Portugal. Gracias. El secretario general de la Conferencia de, de Ministros de Justicia de Iberoamérica, la Procuradora General de la República de Portugal y estará también el Comisario de Justicia de la Unión Europea por videoconferencia. El primer encuentro de instituciones de justicia se celebró de forma online, consecuencia, ya saben, de la pandemia el pasado mes de septiembre. De allí, entre otras cosas, surgió el compromiso de seguir avanzando en una estrategia común de justicia. Por eso estamos aquí y este que vamos a ver es un ejemplo. Dentro vídeo, adelante. Para propiciar el diálogo con el objetivo de modernizar la cooperación jurídica sentar las bases para la implementación de políticas públicas que enriquezcan los sistemas de justicia. Podemos hacerlo juntos porque compartimos los mismos valores y una convicción de que esta crisis global que nos acucia solo puede eh, vencerse asociándonos en la misma tarea. Experience and to investigate together. We apologize, we don't have any sound from the video. Es determinante la cooperación internacional entre las dos regiones para the cooperation between the two regions is crucial to strengthen the uh, strength of ourselves and to become interconnected. Cada día más tenemos grupos de delincuencia transnacional. Estos espacios se convertirán en la herramienta más eficaz para atacar a estos grupos criminales. En estos tiempos de calamidad mundial se hace imperativo buscar nuevas estrategias y acciones para mejorar la lucha contra la delincuencia y el crimen organizado, que precisamente han utilizado para fortalecerse. On the two sides of the ocean is a crucial tool that we must seize and use. Using different international tools to face together the criminality that is affecting both areas in the world. Organized crime cannot be stopped on borders only, and only in our continent's matter of the crimes that are perpetrated in one territory as repercussions in another one. Latin America shares juridical systems with the European Union, and they are capable of working together and working 
working together between the two regions is crucial to find the fight against organized crime, to strengthen the state in a symmetrical and fair way for citizens and all the, the countries that make up this region. The fighting against impunity is uh, effective and the efforts between governments and other uh, bodies are e conferir maior eficácia ao combate à criminalidade que afeta as nossas sociedades. The efficiency to fighting uh, uh, criminality on both sides of the Atlantic. Muchas caras conocidas aquí, muchas ganas de seguir dialogando sobre temas de actualidad importantes en el campo de la justicia. Son tres días de trabajo por delante, horas intensas que cuentan ya con el respaldo de los máximos líderes de las instituciones de justicia de América Latina so y de la Unión Europea. Este es un evento híbrido, el primero que realiza el pacto desde el Europa de la Pandemia. América. Combinaremos las intervenciones presenciales y virtuales y esperamos que podamos alcanzar compromisos so firmes de trabajo conjunto. Para empezar, tiene la palabra la ministra de Justicia de Portugal, Francisca Rano. Para empezar, tenemos la ministra de Justicia de Portugal, la doctora Francisca Van Dunen. Buenos días a todos. Good morning, everyone. Señor Comisario uh, Madam the para Justicia de la Unión Europea. In the European Union. Señor Secretario General Secretary de General of Congib. Señora Ministra de Justicia Minister de Paraguay, of Justice from Paraguay, dear Señora colleague, Procuradora General de la República de Portugal. Public Prosecutor of Portugal. Señores Representantes del Consejo de la Unión Europea. The Council of the da European Cimeira Union and the Judicial Ibero-American Ibero Summit Ibero and the Association of the Senhores ministros do programa uh, Latino-American in Eurojust, líderes do El Pacto e participantes, senhores e senhores. Eu começo naturalmente a intervenção a dar as boas-vindas a todos os colegas. Eu quero aqueles que conseguem estar aqui presencialmente, quero os outros que nos acompanham à distância e que nos acompanham à distância. É um prazer estar nesta sessão de abertura do evento com o lema que vem de alianças entre as regiões, 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 Alliances between the two regions could not be clearer regarding our purposes and bonds that bond us together. Allow me also to thank the directors of El Pacto for this meeting here in Portugal during the Portuguese presidency of the European Union Council, an idea that, of course, Portugal has welcomed for the first time with open arms. Uh, two days to the end of the semester, and I'm sure that the success of this meeting will be an important milestone in the achievement of the ambitious purpose of the presidency in the area of justice on what regards the reinforcement of uh, uh, criminal uh, connections, uh, and at the same time it's a strong signal of the multilateralism that must rule international relationships, the support and cooperation in the areas of justice that the European Union is uh, batting on strengthening with all the regions in the world. An example of that is the inclusion of Argentina, Brazil and Colombia in the list of countries with which Eurojust will celebrate agreements for cooperation or also the placement of con uh, connection officials in different American countries uh, from Europol. And it's certainly a good example of cooperation and synergy creation between European Union and Latin America through specific programs such as El Pacto. The important support to the countries in the region in the prevention and fighting organized transnational crime in a large or wide scope perspective, including the police and judicial and also the penitentiary side. As a technical assistance program for sharing experiences and good practices between European Union countries and Latin America, 
America, América Latina, uh, countries in Latin America, El Pacto has, uh, from its um onset, has played an important role in the reinforcement of uh, competencies and the deepening of uh, cross-border cooperation regionally and internationally, meeting the needs for prevention and fighting against organized crime. This program is also an important opportunity to deepen different aspects of criminal police and, and policies and to create the links of confidence between the different criminal systems uh, to good uh, cooperation on the function based on human rights. And so the good functioning of cooperation, both in the enforcement of law and the execution of uh, uh, penalties, in improving the conditions to follow the objectives of the millennium of the 2030 agenda of the UN. Actually, cooperation is the only way to respond to organized crime, to the different types of traffics, corruption, cybercrime, and other severe crimes, such as minor abuse online and violence against women and children. Transnational criminality is characterized by the participation of a multiplicity of agents acting in different countries at a huge vertiginous speed and using the most advanced uh, technologies and methods and strategies that are more and more complicated and complex and that generate huge profits and it requires as a response international judicial cooperation and police cooperation that is effective and efficient and that can uh, offer an effective response to such a complex criminality. As we all know, we are living in a globalized world where uh, territorial borders no longer are barriers uh, uh, to criminal activities, especially in this uh, digital area, uh, era. The pandemic has created the conditions uh, for organized crime groups to center their action in other types of illicit activities, such as uh, drugs and medications contrafaction, and also medical equipment and products. Police authorities have have uh, seen the uh, offer and sale of fake vaccines for COVID-19, all these online. And counterfaction is uh, a severe risk for health and public safety, a violation of human rights, fostering the traffic of illegal work and immigration, and also trafficking and smuggling of people. We also see the resurgence of racism, xenophobia, hate speech fed by fake news and uh, misinformation. These are questions that are priorities within the European Union, and they are priorities for justice in the presidency of the European Union Council. It is absolutely crucial to deepen the quality and to speed up the justice response and to modernize and simplify international uh, cooperation to fight this phenomenon together that are common to us all and those who profit from cyberspace. And we should do it with full respect for human rights, creating research and investigation joint teams using digitalization and electronic and digital evidence and seizing assets and uh, uh, proceeds of criminal activity. Ladies and gentlemen, it's within this framework that I want to renew the support that the Ministry of Justice has uh, offered to El Pacto and also to talk about some ideas on areas to deepen in a future activity plan in your program that we wish it would, for it to have continuity. I'm talking about uh, a specific uh, investigation techniques, the use of electronic uh, evidence in criminal processes, and an arrest order or the alternative measures to jail 
and uh, training in human rights, which are crucial to the staff in uh, penitentiary administration. A particular aspect that I could not leave uh, here and which I uh, deem is very important is approaching criminal, criminal phenomenon uh, because it won't be complete without protecting the independence and the integrity of our uh, criminal justice uh, systems. Without the promotion of a justice for the defense of the rights of victims and without reinforcing the role of education and our full commitment with the rule of law. To end, uh, ladies and gentlemen, and to respond to the criminal phenomenon of the 21st century and to protect citizens, institutions, and liberty, we need to have systems and authorities of criminal police that are able and empowered with the specialization that is required in complementary areas such as uh, uh, digital uh, uh, techniques and modern techniques of investigation. But most of all, we need that internally and internationally we coordinate and that they coordinate and cooperate uh, among themselves. This is a sine qua non condition to stop this transnational phenomenon. And that's why we should, and we, I would say that we are forced to continue betting on regional and international cooperation, which is based on reciprocal uh, co uh, trust and, and common interest. The El Pacto program undertakes a decisive role in this context. And I follow with special interest the works on the second meeting on uh, justice institutions from Europe and Latin America that regarding the high number of participants and the quality of these participants, I am sure that it will allow uh, or offer an important scope of conclusions and to facilitate our future work. I renew my support of the Ministry of Justice of Portugal to the El Pacto program because you know that in the past you have counted and you can always count and keep counting on us. Thank you very much and have an excellent working day. Thank you for your words, Minister. The first Commissioner of Justice from the European Union is going to intervene by video conference, Monsieur Gideon Reynolds. Buenos dias a todos. Uh, it's a pleasure to be uh, with you, unfortunately, by, by video, but it's a pleasure to uh, uh, stay, take part in the opening uh, session of this uh, summit. Latin America is a key partner for EU judicial cooperation. Organized crime groups operate internationally against these criminal groups should also be based on international cooperation. We need to have the same cooperation between all institutions that is possible to see between the different uh, criminal groups. So the European Union is fully committed to strengthening relations with the countries in the region. We already have uh, several cooperation initiatives also thanks to the El Pacto program. Also, Eurojust has a wide network of contact points that allow, act, allows access to around 80 uh, jurisdictions worldwide. Several countries of the um, Latin American region have appointed contact points and are thus part of this ne network. And thanks for that, because the collaboration with Eurojust is very important in the way to fight against uh, organized crime. And yet it is um, necessary to further strengthen our cooperation. In March this year, uh, the European Commission received a mandate to negotiate cooperation agreements between Eurojust and Argentina, Brazil, and Colombia. We are looking forward to starting negotiations with these countries as soon as possible. And we hope that this is only the beginning of a new phase of strong cooperation with our partners in Latin America. 
In this context, combating and preventing environmental crime is an area where we need to work better together. Environmental crime affects not only individual regions, countries, or continents. Its impacts typically are transnational, spanning the whole globe. Our rivers, seas, soil, air, flora, fauna, food, and health, which together shape the world we live in. Today, environmental crime is the fourth most profitable area of crime area in the world. It's in the same league as the trafficking of human beings and arms. And it is to a large extent organized crime committed by mafia-like organizations. So when we speak about joining forces to find organized crime, we must include environmental crime in our scope. Protecting the environment is first among the Open Commission's priorities. And we need allies like Latin America to be successful in the interest of all of us. And you know that there is a pressure coming from uh, the citizens to find more and more against environmental crime. And we have seen so many uh, young people in the street of so many cities to ask more actions against, cl against uh, climate change and to protect biodiversity. But our part is maybe to have a good judicial cooperation to fight against uh, environmental crime also. Joint investigation teams are an essential tool to fight international cooperation. A joint investigation team bringing judicial and law enforcement authorities from Latin America and the European Union together could allow for coordinated investigations even beyond continents. And allow investigators to easily exchange evidence and information through a dedicated digital collaboration platform. Our world is, you know that, increasingly digital, especially since the COVID-19 pandemic. And so are crime and criminal networks. Criminals adapted quickly and took and continue to take advantage of it. And we have seen that in the last statistic at the European level and at the worldwide level with an increasing of cyber crime, but also crime committed in a digital era. And so we need to organize the same level of protection online that we have tried in the last decades to organize offline. With uh, digitalization evidence in the offline world, such as uh, fingerprints and documents is replaced by volatile digital traces on in the internet. Investigators from across the world face the same problem. How can we obtain the evidence as quickly as possible before criminals delete it and disappear in the anonymity of the worldwide web? Accessing digital evidence cannot follow the same logic as physical evidence, such as paper documents. In the European Union, the European Commission is seeking to adopt new legislation to enable authorities to order internet service providers to preserve and swiftly produce electronic evidence on request. We have worked very hard with the Portuguese presidency, uh, with uh, the minister Francisca Van Dunem about this, and we'll continue with the next presidency, the Slovenian presidency, to try to reach an agreement between the Council about the way to proceed uh, uh, in the, the possibility for the uh, prosecutors and the law enforcement authorities to have an access to e-evidence. I want to thank you, Francisca, for the efforts made during the Portuguese presidency to make progress on this, because we need to progress inside the EU, and then uh, we need also to progress in the uh, international negotiations. And at the international level, the Commission took part in the negotiations of the second additional protocol of the Budapest Convention, which will facilitate cooperation and the disclosure of electronic evidence. It concerns exchanges among all 66 state parties to the Budapest Convention, including several from Latin America. 
But we are also aware that to easily exchange electronic evidence between the European Union and Latin America or work together through uh, joint investigation teams, strong safeguards for fundamental rights, including protection, must be in place in, on both sides. And we need to work on both sides in the way to continue to develop all those instruments to work together to protect uh, uh, that, the, the personal data and to implement real safeguards in the way to protect also the fundamental rights in general. Uh, sharing information, including personal data, is nowadays essential for judicial cooperation. Therefore, promoting strong data protection standards and cross-border cooperation should be complementary objectives. These are key issues of our times. How do we effectively protect fundamental rights in an international and interconnected digital world? And how do we ensure continuity of protection when personal data travel across borders? The response is, I believe, that we need to work with partners to strengthen the mechanism for cross-border cooperation in a way that ensures trust and safeguards for individuals and partner countries alike. We try to be sure that the protection is traveling with the data. It's the reason why we have worked um, a lot with uh, different partners in the world. And now we have uh, uh, several uh, adequacy decisions to organize the data flows, not only for private companies, but also for law enforcement authorities with different countries in the world. And we need also to continue to to work to intensify such a capacity to have a real uh, common agreement on the data flows at the international level. And I'm very pleased to see that many Latin American countries are taking part in multilateral discussions about this and certainly multilateral fora. Uh, and it's very important to continue to work on it. This is the big challenge that lies ahead of us to develop judicial cooperation between the European Union and Latin America. The road may be still long, but when we see how many countries in Latin America are adopting data protection laws that share the same principles as in the European Union, and when we see that the uh, Ibero-American data protection standards and EU standards are compatible, I believe we are reassured we are on the right path. The European Commission is eager to work with its partners in Latin America and with the Ibero-American organizations that are here today and to strengthen our judicial cooperation and making sure that all the necessary instruments, safeguards and protections for fundamental rights are in place. I hope that this even will bring an opportunity to intensify our cooperation. And I seize this moment to thank the organizers from El Pacto and Mrs. Van Dunem for hosting this discussion with our Ibero-American partners today. It was a real commitment before the pandemic to take part in such a process, but we have seen during the pandemic an increasing of crimes on the internet and the use of digital tools by organized uh, crime, by uh, crime organizations. And of course, it's very important to uh, to continue to work on this during the pandemic, but certainly it will be the same after the pandemic. And so in such a, in such a way with this, I would like to wish you a fruitful conference. I'm sure that we will have the opportunity to make again some progress in the way to work together and to try to organize the same kind of actions that we have tried to organize offline to organize a very good judicial cooperation. Thank you very much for your invitation and for such an opportunity, opportunity to address you about those um, issues. Thank you. Thank you very much. Muchísimas eh, gracias, señor comisario, por su intervención en directo desde, desde Bruselas. Continuamos esta parte de la inauguración con el comisario Enrique Gibotero, secretario general de la Comisión. Señor Gibotero. Gibotero, el general secretary, will have the, the floor now.
Excelentísima Ministra de Justicia, Doña Francisca Van Dunen. Uh, Minister of Justice, Doctora Francisca Van Dunen. Excelentísimo de la Unión Europea, Don Didier Reinders. Excelentísima Lucilia Gago, Procuradora General de la República Gago, General Prosecutor of the representantes de of las Portuguese Republic. instituciones aquí presentes. Permítanme and representatives of the different institutions here. In the first place, I would like to welcome the assistance program for the international organized crime outbox for the organization of this uh, event, especially in the context of the world pandemics and the opportunity that was given to us with this invitation to participate in this meeting. A special thanks to the authorities of the Portuguese Ministry of Justice, which is the office of this thing. It's a honor as the General Secretary of the uh, Ibero-American Organization to participate in this meeting of the justice of the Latin America and Ibero-American, which represents a set of reflections on the systems that challenge us in the, uh, regarding the organized crime and at the regional level. Justice is a fundamental tool for the consolidation of the rule of law. Justice adopts several faces, and in all of them, it brings uh, the defense of democracy, and this way, the defense of human rights and promotes social order without justice. There is only anarchy. Without justice, there is tyranny. Justice is a goal that guarantees democracy. To fight infractions is one of its main functions. In the global world, the infraction will be transformed and generate a survival mechanisms that reflect upon crime modalities associated to the use of technological tools. Besides that, the character, uh, the transnational character in the preparation of the uh, infractions became common and is very worrying. The globalization of the world allowed a globalization of crime. Cyber uh, crime uh, narcotraffic, the abuse of people, traffic of medication are some of the infractions and crimes that uh, concern us and which are in the world generally. Uh, facing this reality, states should create tools that are able to face, persecute, and sanction this new organized delinquency, as we know, became more serious due to the pandemics. In this context of juridical uh, cooperation uh, at the international level, we have our uh, tool to combat the crime. The Ibero-American uh, region has built a bridge that has been consolidated in what concerns justice and unites uh, Latin America to the, the countries such as Andorra, Portugal, Spain. Uh, since 50 years, the institutions here the Ibero-American Association, the Ibero-American Summit, and the Conference of the Ministers of Ibero-American uh, Justice Ministers uh, fulfills its mission, each one in their own sphere, and together through the Ibero-American Network of juridical cooperation. Within the scope, we have developed an Ibero-American convention about the use of video conference in 2010, the Ibero-American summit uh, in 2013, and more recently, the treaty the juridical treaty known as the 
a la plataforma Ibera, canal de comunicación de Iberred, como medio preferente entre los estados partes para Ibero Network, a preferential way to organize the uh, assistance uh, everywhere and the, uh, reducing the time and putting in digital the juridical part 100%. This treaty as of September will be open to all the states of the world and will allow us a tool of universal cooperation in a team such as justice, which is the base for the democratic uh, socializing and in peace. This milestone that we are convinced that will be necessary to expand this relationship, Europe is a region, a key region for this. It's a region with which we have a, a continuous interchange and with which we share ideas. And it's a reference in a way of structuring between the sovereign states in the uh, regarding justice, unifying directives and establishing tools and improving the persecution to crime. Uh, the similar normatives for the constitution of the work of the teams working together in the investigation between justice operators in different countries, the agreements to do the management of the asset seized uh, due to infractions. Also, the personal data are some of the great challenge that we share to improve cooperation between Latin America and Europe. Thus, we have to work from a perspective, uh, uh, and we cannot lose ourselves in the building of this accessory and uh, this way sacrifice these moments. It's a moment of dialogue to deepen the actual relevance against organized crime in a transnational way. I thank the uh, European Commission for the support and commitment to walk with us the, this path. Cooperation will be the pillar of understanding between the two regions, and here we deposit our commitment. We have a great challenge before us, and therefore we hope that this kind of meetings precisely between, uh, among the justice departments, uh, between the American, Latin America and Europe, will be able to get not just an alliance, but also to be fruitful uh, against the Transborder organized crime. Thank you. Muchas gracias, señor secretario general de, de la CONGIP. Terminamos Thank aquí esta primera parte de, de introducción. We've Vamos a hacer ahora la foto de la foto de la y cambiamos de panel. Uh, ¿Qué tenemos que we'll hacer para la foto? Now pues have the family photo, the group photo, so we'll go down the stairs and we'll take our photo at the entrance in of this building. So we'll try to do it quickly so that we'll be back to start the first panel in the morning. Thank you.
e e e e e e a
E, 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 E. Hola, ¿qué tal? Ahora sí, bienvenidos de nuevo. Good morning, welcome back. Uh, we will take our seats now, please, so that we can start this first block in the morning after our family photo. So we now must have the Director of Justice of European Union, but he had a problem, a technical problem, so we won't make his intervention now. Maybe later on or in the next two days. So we'll continue now with our agenda and we'll have uh, we'll have Lina Martinaldis now. Good morning everyone present in this meeting both physically and through the internet. First of all, I would like to express my deep thanks, not only for the invitation, but also because of the warm welcome that I got when I arrived. So I will take off my mask. I was asked to. So apart from gratitude, uh, I feel very pleased to be part of different initiatives that have been developed by El Pacto. I've been involved for five years in this since uh, 2017. I was in Buenos Aires, Montevideo, Madrid, and now in Lisbon. And this city, which is so wonderful and charming, and it welcomes us here today. So the purpose of this objective is to improve the working tools so that we can continue progressing in international cooperation. Uh, because there is the need uh, between uh, these uh, entity, international entities. The speed organized crime develops makes it crucial to have a better technological improvement in the service of investigation so that we can achieve um, the 
is being effective in this uh, fight and this uh, uh, with uh, adequate treaties and agreements for that purpose and also that national legislation will be adapted to in its forms and that through that we can achieve the crucial and fundamental changes to reach our objective. We must reach standards and guarantees to issues such as data protection. That will be one of the panels I will intervene later on. Uh, things we already have, but that we need to deepen. So I think it is also important to uh, strengthen the relationships between uh, Eurojust institutions from the European Union and the different uh, institutions in the different states in Latin America. Finally, and also since the summit, we need to ensure that the El Pacto authorities will have the support and the collaboration they require within our competencies and concerns. Finally, I would like to say that I am sure that if before we already had the will to be together and the human contact improves always these relationships, so progresses that can be achieved. If they would be the same as what today we will achieve here and contributing in terms of um, common contributions, I'm sure that this meeting will be a success. Uh, from my side, this is my first meeting in almost two years of work, so I uh, sincerely hope that it will be a very fruitful meeting to all. Thank you all. Thank you for your kind words. Now we will be we'll listen to Xavier Enrique, Javier Enrique Caraballo, uh, public prosecutor from Panama. Good morning, uh, Ms. Elena, Sec Permanent Secretary. Uh, good morning to the authorities that are accompanying us today in this conference. Uh, dear friends from El Pacto, in a globalized world and technological work and more and more interconnected, uh, uh, where criminality no longer has any borders and is using technology more and more as a tool. And research uh, entities uh, uh, to face this type of uh, criminality have as best option to the enlargement of juridic cooperation and informal and informal interchange of juridic information and the technical uh, sentencing between countries. And before, with the pandemic, uh, uh, well, it was a high, hard blow to everyone, and it has sped up what was already a normal trend, uh, greater incidence. Achieved and performed and executed through digital channels in, in cyberspace. It is more and more common to find this crime uh, conduct, uh, which is a public and collective juridic asset, uh, specific jurisdiction, but the evidences of this, uh, of these. Uh, Infractions are in a computer in a geographic uh, location. Where is the author the, of the crime that he has uh, performed 
uh, electronically is out of reach of the investigator. And so no country on its own can have that development and has the possibility of success in this type of investigations. Hence the central importance of a space such as this that uh, gathers leaders of criminal justice to share ideas and best practices and above all to strengthen the tools, the international tools uh, uh, among each one of us. In this meeting of uh, justice of the European Union and Latin America, uh, we have the objective, uh, uh, the, the investigation of an institution that I'm sure will become an essential tool for the investigation of this type of crime, international crime, or it will be a challenge to standardize this type of international tools that will be effective and safe between our two regions is, I'm sure, important in terms of cooperation. So in short, the, the, the president for uh, Central uh, Ibero-American uh, Institute, I thank you for the effort and dedication through El Pacto and, to, and for the, uh, the organization of this meeting. Thank you very much to the Portuguese authorities. Uh, and this is an important milestone for this event and I'm sure that we'll uh, profit as much as possible collectively and it will be interesting in the conclusions that we can withdraw and apply in an effective way through mutual cooperation for the future of our countries. Thank you. Thank you. We end thus our inauguration block with the message that was sent by the, 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 the President Royas. We have, do we have the video? So let's go. Dear colleagues, dear friends, greetings uh, from The Hague, and I hope this message finds you well and in good health. I would have uh, very much preferred to be with you in person, but the combination of uh, other commitments and difficulties related to international travel have decided differently. I'm grateful, however, to leave you this message, as I want to stress Eurojust's commitment to the El Pacto program, but also to cooperation with colleagues in Latin America more in general. Serious crime in the 21st century has changed. It has become global, digital, complex, and sophisticated. This means that we will need to rethink some of the principles of judicial cooperation and conventions rooted in 20th century when crime was still more confined within national borders. Many of uh, the cases we investigate and prosecute today not only happen across borders, but even across continents. Such cases often cannot be managed at the bilateral level only. They need multilateral platform to ensure that justice can be done. And this is exactly what Eurojust offers. The European Union and uh, Latin America enjoy strong economic and cultural ties. We therefore face similar challenges in fighting crime, and we need to face them together. I'm pleased that uh, negotiations on concluding cooperation agreements with a number of countries in Latin America can soon start, and I hope that others can follow in the near term. If we can do this, we will really turn the theme of this meeting, building alliances between two regions, into reality. For all these reasons, we are looking forward at Eurojust to working much more with you in years to come, and I'm grateful to El Pacto program for bringing us closer together. Dear colleagues, dear friends, let me finish this message by wishing you all a productive meeting these next few days. As I said, 
I cannot be with you myself, but my good uh, colleague, Mr. Jose de la Mata, our national member for Spain, will be representing Eurojust, and I'm sure he will be happy to answer any questions you may have. Thank you again very much, and I look forward to seeing you soon. Muchas gracias. Bueno, pues con esta intervención terminamos esta parte de, de inauguración del evento. Vamos a tener ahora una pausa para, para el café y enseguida regresamos eh, con el equipo del pacto que nos va a comentar los objetivos más concretos de esta actividad, la línea de trabajo durante, durante los próximos eh, días y, y a partir de ahí, Eh, and the agenda for the next agenda, days, and from then we have, uh, Entonces, vamos a, after having that, we will start para with the work ese, uh, ese descanso, uh, tables, and we will de, enjoy a coffee break of 10 minutes, and then I want to tell you that tomorrow eh, and on Wednesday todos, we are going to have a PCR test to everybody, so y se lo comentan a, bueno, a cualquier persona para ver en qué turno travel, están y, que, y a qué hora le pueden hacer, le pueden hacer la prueba. Así que the, nada más, tomamos ahora esa pausa y, so y regresamos con nuestra hora. So let's have our coffee and get back in a few minutes. Muy bien, ya estamos de vuelta en este
Vamos lá a todos. 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Tá, Deixa-me tirar a máscara. Ei, ei, ei. 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. A. A, A, A. I, I, I. O que é que parece?